All right, this is ACE Chemistry Section 2.4, the structure of the atom, which is probably one of the most um, important sections we are going to talk about in Chapter 2 because it deals with the breaking down of the atom. And if the atom, if you understand what the atom does, um, then you understand the properties of how it reacts. Um, so, let's get right into it. So, in the past century, we have discovered that the atom is composed of two or three subatomic particles, the proton, neutron, and electron. Positive protons, neutral and neutrons, and negative electrons. So the Bohr model is the simplest, most the simplest of the compli <laughs> simplest way we can um, talk about the atom. Um, it's not the recognizable theory at the moment, which is the orbital theory, but it helps us understand it a little bit better. So in the center, we have the nucleus, which is made up of the protons and neutrons. And then we have the electron cloud, where electrons are located. So in the nucleus, you have protons that are positive and neutrons that are neutral. So they have a zero charge. And electrons are negative, um, giving you the balance between positive and negative. So the proton is P+. Plus. It's uh, inside the nucleus. Its atomic or the relative mass is one. We call that one atomic mass unit, one AMU. The actual mass of it is 1.674 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So obviously, working with that number makes it more difficult. So we say one AMU. It's positive charge. The importance of it is the atomic number, which is the identity of the element. So if the proton changes, the element changes. And it was discovered by Rutherford in 1909. The electron is E negative, and it's outside the nucleus called the electron cloud. Um, more specifically, we'll get into um, is the electron orbitals. Its atomic mass unit is one one eighteen one hundredth of a mass, so really really small. Um, you can see 9.11 times 10 to negative 28 grams compared to 24 for the proton. It's a negative charge, and it is the number of electrons located in the last energy level will determine its reactivity. So that's really what's important about the electron is it really affects the reactivity of the element. And it's discovered by Thompson with the cathode ray tube in 1897. The neutron is n or n zero its atomic relative mass is the same as a proton one amu its actual mass is relatively close to the proton 1.675 times 10 to negative 24 grams it's inside the nucleus with the proton it's neutral and it is responsible for isotopes of atoms of the same element but different neutrons so what happens is that you have um number of neutrons change, so that means the mass number changes of the element, and you call isotopes. And that was discovered by Chadwick in 1932. All right, so we look on the periodic table. You have a square. Each element has its own square, and here are the parts of it. The atomic number, which is also the number of protons, and the number of electrons, if it's neutral. That's important to understand. Um, so for lithium here, it's number three, three protons, three electrons, and then the relative mass is, in this case, seven, so it's four neutrons, and the atomic mass is the average of all the different isotopes. So when rounded to a whole number, it's the total number of protons and neutrons added together. So for example, we can round 6.9 to seven, so lithium would have four neutrons and three protons. Three plus four gives you seven. So here you should be able to fill in the PR table, the table with protons, neutrons, and electrons. Again, they're all neutral. So silver has 47 uh, protons and its mass is roughly 108, so it's 61 neutrons. And then you have potassium. Neon is 10. So it's 10 all the way around because its atomic mass is close to 20. Hydrogen is 1 and 0 neutrons because the atomic mass of hydrogen is close to 1. Sulfur is 16, 16, 16. Zinc 
has a mass of 65, so the protons and neutrons are 30 and 35. Uranium has a lot more neutrons. Gold, again, has more neutrons than um, protons, and then electrons are always the same as protons. Fluorine has 10 neutrons and 9 electrons because the atomic mass is 9, and for neutral atoms, it's going to be the same as the proton. And here, cesium is 55, 78, and 55. So isotopes. So isotopes have the same element, so that means they have the same number of protons and same electrons if it's neutral, but they have different number of neutrons, and that causes the weight, the mass of the um, element to be a decimal. Um, so here we have three isotopes of hydrogen, uh, one, two, and three. And you can see that the number of neutrons are increasing each time. So it goes from zero to one neutron to two neutrons. Notice the proton stays the same because it's hydrogen, and the electrons stay the same because it's hydrogen. So the number that just changes is the neutrons, which causes the mass to change. Now, the majority of hydrogen is hydrogen one. You can see at 99.985%. Um, so that's why the mass of hydrogen is really close to 1, because it's 1.008 uh, AMUs. So isotopes have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And atoms of the same element will have different masses. So for example, chlorine 35 has 35 um, total of neutrons and protons where chlorine 37 has two more neutrons to give you a mass of 37. So the protons stay the same at 17 because it's chlorine, and the neutrons change based on their isotope. So here you try these problems out. You're into the protons, neutrons, and electrons, and the name for these three isotopes of carbon. You have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. You check your answer, you get six neutrons, six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons for carbon-12. Its name is carbon-12. Then you have six protons, seven neutrons, and six electrons for carbon-13. And then for carbon-14, you get six, eight, and six. Notice the only thing changes is the neutrons because you can't change the proton, you can't change the electron because it's neutral. So the only thing changes is your neutrons. Try this one out, calcium 42, calcium 43, and calcium 44. You check your work. You should have 20, 22, and 20, 20, 23, and 20, and 20, 24, and 20. Again, the only thing changes is the neutrons, each one by one. So the number, the, the mass changes from 42 to 43 and 44. Try this number three out. You get zinc 64, zinc 65, and zinc 66. Again, notice I all have 30 protons because it's... So you get 30, 34, 30, zinc 64, 30, 35, 30, zinc 65, 30, 36, 30, and zinc 66. All right, so why on the parent table do they have um, decimals? Why don't they hold numbers? That's because of isotopes. So what they do is find the average of all the different isotopes. Everything's based on one standard, and that's carbon-12. So all the masses are based on the mass of carbon-12. Um, so the relative masses of all other atoms are always determined by the comparing each to the mass of carbon-12. An atom twice as heavy has a mass of 24, and an atom that has half of heavy is 6, which makes sense. So on the periodic table, you have the average of the atom of each element compared to 12. And the average is based on the isotopes and their abundance. So the more abundant it has, the more it has on its um, affects the average. So atomic mass is not a whole number. So average atomic mass is weighed the average mass of the mixture of its isotopes. 
So to find the average, you take the sum of each of the isotopes times its abundance, but make sure the abundance is in decimal form, not percent form. So percent is abundance of isotopes times the mass of each isotope, and that will give you the average weighted atomic mass. So again, you gotta make sure you divide by 100 or remove the decimal over twice from the isotope percentage to get into decimal form. So here are some examples. We have carbon, or I'm sorry, magnesium 24, magnesium 25, and magnesium 26. So magnesium is mass of 24, 25, and 26. You can see the abundance on the right hand side. The majority is 78% of carbon of magnesium 24. So it's going to be closer to 24 than anything else. And you can see the average mass is 24.3, which makes sense. Okay, gallium is a metallic element found in small lasers, and you have samples of gallium of 69 at 60.2 percent and 671 at 39.8 percent. What's the atomic mass of gallium? So you have two isotopes, two masses, and here is the work. So, gallium 69, you multiply that by the percent in decimal form, so it's 0 0.602, and that gives you 41.5. Gallium 71 is at 0 0.39, 398, or 39.8%, and that gives you 28.2 when you multiply by 71. You add up 28.2 and you add up 41.5, and you get 69.7 AMUs. Okay, here we have carbon, three, four different carbons, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, the most stable is carbon 12 and carbon 13. Find the average atomic mass. So we need the percents first, 4%, 75%, 17%, 17% and 4%, okay? So 11 times four, or well, you gotta divide by 100, and then you add 12 times 75% or 0.75. You have 13 times 17 or 0.17, and then you got 14 times 4% or 0 0.04 and you add everything up and that will give you your average atomic mass. You gotta make sure though the percents are in decimal form and you should get 12.01 as your answer for the average atomic mass of carbon. Boron, boron 10 and boron 11. Again, boron number five on the periodic table, five protons, five electrons. The only difference is Boron 10 has five neutrons, because five plus five is 10. And boron 11 has six neutrons, which is five plus six is 11. 80% for carbon, or boron 10, 20% for boron 11. What is the average atomic mass? So you should be able to try this on your own and see if you get the answer. So 10 times 0 0.8, because 80 divided by 100 is 0 0.8, plus 11 times 0.2, gives you 10.8 AMU. And we have 10.81 on the periodic table. Good enough. All right, try silver. We have silver 107 and silver 109. Um, one's at 51% or so and one's at 48%. So you gotta make sure you do, turn those into decimals. So 107 times 0.5186. You add that to 109 times 0.4814. Add them up, you get 108 AMUs. Here is silicon. We have three isotopes, silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. So silicon weighs 28 AMUs, 29 AMUs, and 30 AMUs. The majority of it is at 28 AMUs, but 92.21%. So 28 point times 0.9221 plus 29 times 0 
and silicon 30 times 0 0.0309 gives you 28.3 AMUs. All right, so let me know if you have questions. We will um, review this as well in class and then do your isotope worksheet.